Good evening. I wrap Stephen of Linden Associates with your Metals Market Wrap Up, and this is for Tuesday evening, the 7th of April, 2020, and I'm very late at 6 o'clock, and I'll tell you why. 75 degrees in Chicago. I've been in the house for a week. I wanted to go outside and enjoy the weather. So, truth, it's that simple. Now, a couple of things we have to understand. We're going into, obviously, Passover now, Easter both holidays. Normally people aren't around. They go to the families and so on. It's not going to be this that way this year. People are going to be at home. They'll have phone calls. They'll have virtual meetings. But they're not going to travel. They're not going on the road to visit people. That's probably not going to happen. Yeah, there'll be a few, but it's going to be far and few between. Which also means the markets won't die off in the volume, in my opinion, that it normally does going into these holidays and then have to reset as people drive back on really Monday for all purposes. Not going to happen. So you're going to get a different type of holiday here where the market just goes fine, it's Easter, fine, it's Passover, and moves right on through that. Not for religious and not because people don't care, but they're home. If they're home, they're in front of their computer screens. If they're in front of their computer screens, they're going to be trading. So I'm looking at the stock market, and I've got to tell you, I was sticking my neck out this morning. For those of you that get my morning subscriber video, I stayed with what I thought was right, and it turned out to be pretty accurate. Today, I was expecting a Tuesday reversal in a lot of markets, and I got it. I got what I wanted, and we, we'll talk about some of that in the financial sector. But you got up in, this, in the gold market, and you had a big failure in the market in the 1740 area. We'll talk about that. Silver tonight's down another 25 cents. Copper's down two cents. Did the market get ahead of itself with thinking, ah, we're getting all this news out of uh, New York, and we can see that the number social distancing is working. It definitely is. And things maybe there's something on that horizon for the whole United States to think, ah, it's going to get suddenly better. I think that's where the error could come in. Not that this disease can't be beaten by us staying home, but we have to stay home. You're still, this is April 7th. You probably in many parts of large cities aren't even thinking of coming out of this shut-in until the end of the month. So you get your bounce, you get your big hurrah, but let's go to the gold chart. Gold had a great day. It got itself up uh, to 1724, and then the market, as you can see, let itself go and finished the day out at 1664.80. Okay, still unable to punch through this uh, 1672.40 close. When you come to the daily chart, you see how it got up to 1740, and now the market has given up all of a sudden $70 an ounce. What's that about? Well, I don't know that it's really bad action. I, it's terrible if you bought it up there, obviously, but if you were buying it there, what were you looking for? An immediate $2,000 an ounce? I don't know what your thought process was. When I look at the chart, I see a pattern of a lower low and a higher high. Friends, that is not a trend. I'm not blind. I see the thrust the market's done. It's gone from 1460 up to 1740. Come on, it's $300 an ounce. Do you think I don't see that? I see it and I see it very well. But when I look at the chart overall, I don't even know why I left that arrow up there. It shouldn't be. I, I'm seeing that the market maybe needs to do more work, not necessarily at this low area, but somewhere between where it's at and down here again, and get a pattern that traders can live with being a higher low, higher high pattern. I have my doubts that we'll get back through this 1576 very easily. I look at where the Bollinger Band is. Let's go to that. I just reset the computer so I could do this. I couldn't do it in my Spider ETF. This is how you finished the day yesterday. I will tell you over and over, the first challenge of a Bollinger Band, especially when they're far apart, the pros are taking money off the table. I think the algorithms actually build it in in some manner, way, shape, or form. Market goes to it clears it by all of $3, and now you're $70 lower. I think they took their money off the table. I think the first time you hit lower bands, it does the same. Can it slide on you? Absolutely. This game is not about catching the low and the high. It's about getting something out of the middle, whatever you define as the middle. When I look at slow stochastics, 
they are overbought. So I have a market that's overbought. I have a market that hit the upper Bollinger Band for the first time since March. And to not think you might get some resistance up there, I'm not in that camp. That's what I expected. I love what I'm seeing on the gold-silver ratio because if metals are going to come alive, if they get to the point where they believe that governments around the world that are throwing money to stimulate their economies are debasing their currencies, and if you want to storage value against them that the metal markets might offer that, that gets interesting. You also look at the silver that it got maybe at 125, just stepped on, and maybe that's a historic high. I happen to think industry is going to come back. I happen to think there'll be demand for copper, demand for silver. I don't think it's tomorrow morning, but I do think it's right around the corner. I am watching China. Wuhan today opened up the city for travel now. So as these factories start getting back and people do things, how far away is uh, Japan? South Korea, how far away is Europe, the United States, their pa trade partners, if you will, from eventually getting past their points in the uh, what we'll call the far cycle when you go up that curve and come down it. We'll see. It's very interesting. And you know that Tokyo locked, uh, not Tokyo, Japan locked down two cities in Japan, one of them being Tokyo, and it's going to throw a billion dollars more at stimulus for their economy. That was announced this morning. So, Market coming down, silver getting a bit of a, a bit in it. It's got a cleaner pattern than gold does. It's had the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. It was unable to get as high as the Bollinger Band. It missed it, not by a lot, but missing it's missing it. Uh, today's high 1593, the upper Bollinger Band 1604. So on the pullback, the question is, how does it do? Does it take out this 1435? Does it even get there? I don't know. But does it take it out to hurt it? What I do know is you have an overbought market that's had a heck of a thrust. You've come from 1167 all the way up to that high of near $16. So you've added enough in that market where maybe it needs to consolidate those gains. Just a thought process. In the copper market, we had the first move yesterday Let's go here uh, to Monday. Yesterday to the 18-day average of closes, knocking on the door. Today is the first move over it. You haven't had a close over it like this. we got to come into this whole pattern here, February going into March. That was the last time it did it. So I think it's something of a statement that the market's going to have a very hard time of getting me to get back here. I'm wondering if that isn't the low. I'm more inclined to think it is than it isn't on this chart. And I'm thinking copper is looking better and better. Is it overbought? Any reason? over 70 in the stochastics are so yes but I'm also looking at a market that should find support here at 222.06.05 is actually the number then and I don't want to see it under uh, 218.20 if it's going to be able to hold pullbacks in the marketplace in the platinum market overbought in an uptrend pretty far away from that upper Bollinger Band but it too is starting to say maybe this was too much to the downside. I mean, when auto plants fire back up, and it be it a diesel engine, be it a gas combustion engine, you're going to have demand for the plant in the market and palladium. It's not going to be all of a sudden. There's plenty of ground stockpiles, but there's going to be demand. And that could be one of the reasons that this 100-day average in the palladium is starting to show itself again as a support zone. Is this chart in a buy setup? I don't see that. I see a market that's overbought, the pattern's lower highs, lower lows. Even today's rally to 2190 didn't get over the 21, uh, 2206.40. So could it break down and try to get back to that 18-day average? Yeah, certainly could. But in the back of my mind, I'm starting to think factories. The dollar today, down. And these aren't small moves in the dollar. Let me tell you, you get an 80-point move in the dollar. On a normal day, it would take something massive out of a Fed. It would take a central bank somewhere else in the world, something happening. This is an everyday occurrence right now, which for currency traders, some like it, most don't. You know, these FX houses, as I call them, and I'm not talking the future side of it, they give you crazy leverage numbers. And you get these moves if, they're, if you're... Win it, it's fine, but trying to is hard. Um, 
looking at this, the trend and the swing lines up, the bias switched down today because you're under the 18 day average and momentum is still drifting to the downside. So you got all kinds of forces fighting with themselves here. I think that 18 day average is proving to be a very important number. Look at how often you keep hitting that and that's what I'd be paying attention to. So we're in that time frame where meat markets went limit up today. You're looking at different markets starting to react to this COVID-19 and where we're at in the curve, where Europe is at. I mean, as bad as the death counts are, they're coming to the other side of that curve. How is that gonna impact, be it the metal markets, the currency markets? We talk about all that at Lynn. And we cover all these different markets for you. So if you're with our research, if you're a trading account, you have access to all this. And it's sent to you by email or right in our charting software. In addition, you get oral commentaries throughout the day. I don't do one of those, but you're entitled to see those. And on those, what you'll notice is we have David Hightower, if you like the Hightower report, covering all the financial markets, the metal markets, the soft commodities, everything that's in there. And then our experts coming in and giving you what they see. And as the growing season starts, that's pretty important because we have our own meteorologist as well. To take a look at what we've got, go to www.irapstein.com. You'll see on the bottom right of the page, free offers, click it. You can see the whole list of them. Choose what you'd like. Love to see you with that. I'm Irapstein. You have a good day. We'll see where these medals go tomorrow.